Hello everyone, welcome to the another episode of AI series. And you might have seen in my previous videos that how we can utilize computer vision service to analyze an image, classify an image, and to detect objects within that image. So today we will learn how we can we extract or read text from an image, irrespective of whether it is handwritten or the printed one. Now to read the text, two things come into the picture. First is the computer vision and second is the NLP which is short for natural language processing. Computer vision help us to extract and help us to read the text and then NLP is used to make sense of that uh, text. So to keep this video short today I will be talking only about the text extraction part. Now the question is how computer vision performs this. So to perform this uh, text extraction task, Computer Vision provides us with two APIs, OCR API and the Read API. So here I have placed the table which clearly explains when to use what. So OCR API works with many languages and is very well suited for relatively small text. But if you have so much text in any image or say if any image is you know, text dominated, then Read API is your option. So OCR API provides information in the form of regions and then regions will have lines and then lines will in turn contain words. So this is the output hierarchy which we will see in case of OCR API. Whereas coming on to the read API, it works very well with an image when the image is highly loaded with the text. And the best example of this text dominated image is any scan document or you would say any printed document. And here output hierarchy is based on the pages. So image will have multiple pages and individual pages will have number of lines and then number of lines will have their own number of words. So this is how both these APIs work. And as read API deals with huge number of words and the lines, it works in, in an asynchronous fashion so that our UI will not get hanged until the, com the complete document is scanned or data is extracted. Whereas OCR API works in a very synchronous fashion. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, like object detection API, both OCR and read API return bounding boxes, which depict the location or say coordinates of the text in an image. So let's have a look at the code to understand how to use these APIs. So I'm on my Visual Studio. Now before running the, uh, before explaining the code, I would like you to have a look on the output so for demo purpose what I have taken I have taken this particular image from the internet and it has a text I have no special talent I am only passionately curious which is by Albert Einstein so if you will analyze this image using OCR API then here you could see that here language is English region it is saying I mean it is having the region and inside the region you can see the lines array and this is a JSON format so this particular bracket denotes array and inside line each line has this particular coordinate now if you will read this thing you will see that first line is having I have no spatial and this is what our image is saying so in second line, you will have talent dot I'm only. So if I will go to my next line, which starts from here. So it has its own coordinates and talent dot I am only. So this is how it uh, extracts the text out of an image. Now quickly have a look at this code and understand how things work. Now we are working with the cognitive services and to be specific it is a computer vision service. So we need a subscription key and the endpoint. So for subscription key and the endpoint we need to go to the Azure portal and go ahead and create the cognitive service. So again now if you are working on a single service under the cognitive service then you can go with that particular service. Let's say you are dealing only with the custom vision. So you can directly go in custom vision resource. But if you have a plan that you may use other services which are falling under cognitive services, then it's always a good idea to create a single resource as a cognitive service. 
So I have already created one. And here you can see that once the resource is created, you will get the keys and the endpoints. So this is what we are expecting in our course. So we just need to copy this particular key. And here comes the endpoint at the end. So we need to cop grab these both and just paste it over here. Next comes the endpoint part. So endpoint would be our this, which we grabbed it from the job portal. And this is the portion which we need to hit as an API. This is the path of my image, which is stored locally. And here what we are doing is we are trying to call the API. So these are the default request headers. And if you will see language, I'm just men not mentioning anything. So it will pick up automatically and orientation will also be detected. And if it is not correct, then API will correct it before reading or going through the text extraction part. So first thing we are doing is we are converting our image into a byte array. And after that, we are simply making a call to the API using our URI, which we have created. So once it, this call is successful, we will go ahead and extract the content or the response and we'll simply print it out. So this is how it is. And you can see that how easy it is. Next, coming on to the read API part. So for this, I have created one sample. Let's go ahead and execute that one also. So for this example, I have taken this particular image, which is very much uh, text uh, dominated. So let's go and see how things work. So as it is an asynchronous, so it may take time to appear the results. So let's open both these simultaneously so we can go ahead and compare it. And here is the image. So I will reduce the size of this. Okay. Now, like it works on the hierarchy of pages rather than regions. So you can see there is a page one and these are the height width. Measuring unit is the pixel. And for each line, it will have the bounded bounding box. So you can see that the first line which is left aligned is the text and it contains some words. So now how many words? It is again an array of words. So first word is left and the second word is aligned. And again, you can see that uh, it is showing the confidence level also that how accurately it was able to detect the text. Now coming on to the second line. So here it is clearly saying Laurel Ipsum is simply dummy. And again, we are having individual words simply and uh, let's do have a look at one more line. This is the second, third line according to the image. So text of the printing and so you can see that how it is extracting the text. But the way API call is done is completely different. So let's have a look at the read API call. So again, I have used the same subscription and the endpoint, subscription key and the endpoint because I have created a single cognitive services resource. But one difference here is the API. So this is one which I'm going to call. So this is the main portion. I'm passing the image file path, which is stored on my local machine. And these are the default headers, which I mentioned. Now you can see there is one important uh, variable I have declared which is the operation location. So the reason why it is used is when uh, read API works, it is not a single method call. We need two different types of methods. So in a very first, first, I mean, we need to make two REST API calls to extract the data. So one method is to submit the image for processing and another one is to retrieve the text found inside the image. So this particular variable operation location is the output of the first API. And this will be used in before making the call or for making the call in the second API. So if I will show you here, here again, we are reading the bytes. And this is the first call we are making. So whatever the response it is, we will get. And if the response is successful, then only we are getting the operation location. So it means response will not have body. It will have this value only inside the header. 
So we will extract it and this particular parameter we will pass it when we are making a call to second call to the API. So here that's the reason I am saying two API calls would be required and this will contain our actual response. And the reason why I am doing all these complex calculation over here is because first thing is it is asynchronous so I am just checking it after every thousand milliseconds and the, these all like uh, 30 and this calculation I'm doing because I haven't added retry logic but in your case if you don't want to go with any specific numbers you can definitely go ahead and write your own retry logic so until retry is working and things are I mean text is getting extracted we are good to go otherwise you can handle that particular situation in your code accordingly so this is how it works I would like to show you one more thing what if we pass the text dominated uh, image with the OCR API. So let's have a look at that. So I will change this code a bit and I'm passing the image which I have used in my read. So instead of read, I'm using that particular image in the OCR API. Now let's go ahead and this is my OCR sample. So I will go ahead and run this thing and you will notice that there would be a huge difference uh, but in my case image is simple but still we can see some differences. So it identified region, left align it identified correctly, next is the Lauren Ipsum is simply so you can see that instead of simply it is saying simply so it means as texts are placed very close it is not able to create proper boundaries or it is not able to detect individual characters and that's the reason you can see the spelling mistake or it identified anything so similar mistake you can you may see in other words also here so here instead of industry it is reading as industry so that's the reason when you have an image with heavy text, it's always good to go with the read APIs. So I hope you got a pretty much idea on when to use which API. And that's all I have for today. And before leaving, I would like to tell you that there are many usage and application of this text extraction. But the best one which I can think of and which we everyone of us can relate from our daily day to day routine is the whiteboard meet used during the meetings. And whenever we are having meeting on the whiteboard, we use usually clicks a picture for a reference. Now, if you want to extract the text out of that image, how can you do that? So this is the perfect choice in that scenario. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this new feature and do share and subscribe my channel so that you do not miss my next video. Thanks for sharing.